In this video from Belixo, we're going to look at how to sort the results of a generic inquiry report. Here we have a sample report based on a generic inquiry. We've provided supporting information in the header of our report. This specifies the connection we'll use, the inquiry from which we'll bring in data, the columns from that inquiry that we want to include in the report, and finally, the filters we want to apply to the data to specify the exact data we want to retrieve. We've used the Velixo GI filter function and referenced the specified filters, and then used the GI function to bring in that data. The data is contained in an Excel dynamic array. Now that we have the data listed, we could apply Excel's filter feature and then use that to add and remove rows in our report. For example, we can select any column and only show those rows which contain specific options for that column. What we cannot do, however, is use the filter's sort capability. Excel does not currently support this ability with dynamic arrays. So, let's look at how we can sort the results of our report. We'll want to use Excel's sort function. We start by embedding the Velixo GI function inside of the sort function. Next, we need to define which column we want to sort by. We do this by simply specifying the number of the column we want to use. In this case, we'll sort by customer, which is column number three. Finally, we need to specify whether we want to use an ascending or descending sort. Let's choose ascending. Now our report is in alphabetical order by the customer. The problem with this approach is that if our report viewer wants to sort the data differently, they have to know how to adjust the Excel sort function. Let's make it easier for them by allowing them to simply choose which column they want to sort by and have the report respond accordingly. We could add a cell to our report, place the column number there, and then modify our sort function to reference the cell. Now when we change the value in that cell, our data is sorted by the column we've specified. The disadvantage of this is that it requires the viewer to count the columns and then put that number in the cell. Let's make it a little easier yet by allowing them to choose from a list the column they want. Rather than just placing the numbers in a cell, let's place the actual column names and allow the viewer to select from that. We already have that list here in the header we've created for our data. We created this by using the Velixo VX text split function to list out the columns we specified in the heading of our report. Let's use Excel's data validation tool to create our list. Let's create a pull down list here above our data. From the data ribbon, we'll select data validation. We want a list, and the values for that list are located in cell E13 and extend to the length of the array. So we'll use the pound sign to extract all the data elements. Now, all the column names appear in our pull down. We still need to translate the column name into a number, one, two, three, etc., for the sort function. Let's put in a formula that will count our columns. Now that we have both the column names and the numbers, we can use Excel's XLOOKUP function to look up the selected name in our list of names and return the number associated with that column. When we select a different column from our pull down list, our lookup function will show the corresponding column number and our data is automatically sorted by that column. Let's also give the user the ability to choose whether the data is sorted in ascending order or descending order. We'll create another pull down list. This time, we'll simply enter the values for our list here. Over in column A, we'll create an Excel if function to set the value to one if the viewer selected ascending or negative one otherwise. And we'll modify our sort function to reference that cell. Now the viewer has control of both the column used for sorting and the order of that sorting. To finish things off, 
we can hide the areas the viewer doesn't need to see. If you do not want to have to hide the cells containing the column number and the sort order, we don't even have to use those. We can, instead, simply place the functions from those cells into our sort function. Instead of referencing the cell in column B, we'll simply copy that function and place it in our sort. Then we'll do the same thing for the function in column A. Then we can delete the data in columns A and B. And now we have full control over the sort column and order simply by changing the values in our two pull down lists. I hope you found the techniques in this video useful. Be sure to check out the other videos available on our online help center and YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.